The Lord was like, you kind of live in the idea that you're in a storm now, but it'll pass, and then I can rest. Oh. You know, it might, might be next Friday, it might be next month. And he said, that's actually idolatry, it's really fantasy. The thing is, you can have a tornado swirling around you, but in the very middle of that tornado is what? It's perfectly still. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. We know in today's fast-paced world where the cultural climate is so unpredictable, many struggle to find true rest in the chaos. But today's guest is here to share how God is inviting us to a deeper rhythm of life where peace can be found even in the most uncertain moments. But before we get to that, joining me around the table is my peaceful friend, April Simon. <laughs> so good to be here. And I, I believe in if it costs you your peace, it's too expensive. Yeah, so. yeah. You know, it, it's hard to understand this, but for people who know God and walk with Him, mm -hmm. they can truly say that you can have a peace yeah. mm -hmm. in the midst of a storm. Mm -hmm. Yes, because yes. God's with you. Yeah. I don't know how anybody makes it without God. I. Don't either. I don't either. Exactly. Anna Kendall? Yes, I don't either. You know, years ago, I saw a poster that said, Jesus is the still point in a turbulent world. Yes. Yes. And that he is the still point. He is our peace. And the scripture that I love from Psalm says, great peace have yeah. those who love God's law yes. and nothing shall offend them. So we don't have to live in offense. We can live in peace. You know, Rachel, um, I was thinking that you're kind of, on your journey, if you will, into, you know, you've been a Christian for years, but I mean, in ministry and walk and the more that the Lord trusts you with. And, but with that territory comes um, storms and comes disruptions yeah. and valley experiences. But every time that you walk through one and God brings you out of whatever you're going through today, um, I always say, you hear me say this all, it's like you get another notch in your belt to trust him for the next thing that yeah. comes up. You know, the thing is, I love that, you know, Jesus can calm the storm yeah. and sometimes he does that. But even if he doesn't, he's in the boat with you. Yes, mm. right. And that's something that brings me great comfort knowing no matter what I go through, yeah. what I face, mm -hmm. God is always right there by my side well, you think to about guide me through. The story of Cindy Johnston, welcome, of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yes. The, I mean, they stood for truth and said, you know, mm. even if right. God doesn't deliver us, mm -hmm. we are not going to bow our knee. Amen. And um, we serve the true, true and living God. And we're coming to that place in the world today where we're going to have to take a stand for truth on some of those things. We absolutely are. We can't continue to sit and be silent. We've got to say what is true and stand for what is true. Yeah. And, but Jesus is our peace. Yeah. Um, he said to cast all of your cares on him. That's good. Because he cares for you. Yes, That's a word does. for you today. Some of you are watching and thought, thinking about changing the channel. <laughs> Don't. Because you need to hear this. Um, because you need peace in your life. Yes. And I'm telling you, uh, the only place you're going to find it is in a true relationship with the, with the true and living God that created you. Cindy so Murdoch, true. you and I have been through some storms together. <laughs> we have been. And I was thinking about one of the, mo the worst storms I'd ever been in in my life. And I was with the boys and we were having to attend a situation and I was singing, just kind of softly worshiping. And I remember John David, my oldest, he said, Mom, how can you be singing right now? And I said, baby, I don't know, but there's just a song in my soul. Hmm. Yeah. And it was bringing me peace in the midst of the situation. Yeah, yeah. So many great songs oh, we could goodness. do about, <laughs> talk about on that. Anyway, well, she's a modern day Esther, an advocate for our children, a mother of five, and the author of Still, Seven Ways to Find Calm in the Chaos. Please welcome our dear friend, Jenny Donnelly. Come on in, Mother. Hello. Hello. Mother of five. <laughs> That's right. Welcome. Yeah. So Talk good to have you. Peace, right? Thank you. Good to have Thank you, you back at the table. Yeah. Tell good us what's going here. on. Lots 
going on. You know, you heard us talking about that. I know you talk about in your book, Steel, which we're going to talk about. The thing is, you can have a tornado swirling around you, but in the very middle of that tornado is what? It's perfectly still. Yes. Right? We, yeah. Most people understand that concept. And so I was in prayer one day. And I had a piece of paper and I just started swirling around. And I was like, why am I doing this? <laughs> and God said, well, you kind of live in the idea that you're in a storm now, mm -hmm. but it'll pass. And then I can rest. Oh. Mm -hmm. You know, it might, might be next Friday. It might be next month. Or, you know, how we look ahead to Thanksgiving break yeah. or vacation. And he said, that's actually idolatry. It's really fantasy hmm. to believe that, I, that rest is after this thing. And he kind of had to change my definition of rest. He said, it's, it's think of it as... The person of rest, Jesus, mm. becomes a place when you abide in him. Ooh. That's so good. Instead of resting, the verb, the action of resting. And he yeah. said, I needed to learn to live in the place of rest. Wow. You know, and that's one of the reasons why I wrote my book, Through the Storm, is because so many people said to me after Marcus graduated to heaven, you know, how are you doing this? Like, how are you, like, mm -hmm. what, do you, you know, what is your secret? You know, yeah. and right. really there was no secret except exactly what you're mm -hmm. saying. Yeah. yeah, I felt the swirl around me. Yeah. I still at times feel the swirl around me, but I'm in the middle yes. and he's with me mm -hmm. and I just have a peace. Mm -hmm. Like I don't have to fall apart, worry about it or think, when is this going to be so over? So how do you do that practically? Yeah. Yeah. Resting in the middle of the chaos. Yes. Resting in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. another book. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, once I knew, wait a minute, you're saying that I can have complete peace mm -hmm. in, in the, the middle of this, then I wanted it. So step one is... You gotta want something different mm. than you have right now. And the biggest thing that was grieving me was using false fuel, which was irritability. I kind of grabbed onto irritability, like kind of shove my family out of the way and get everybody okay, kind of get bossy, you know? And I was thinking, I am a nicer person than us. <laughs> Where is she? And the Lord was like, well, you're kind of reserving her for when things aren't so crazy. Mm. And yet when one storm is leaving, the other one's already right. come in, so practically. This is what he had me do, and it was intentional. This, this revelation of rest, for me, it didn't like follow me and take, I had to literally say, I'm gonna get this down. Mm. First is decision, the second one was, okay, now Jenny, when you walk into situations and you kind of feel like I wanna control or I wanna just get angry or irritable or sad or depressed or whatever, he said, that's your moment to find me. And then he, he brought me through so much practice. Let's talk about laundry with five children. <laughs> that puts clean clothes in the laundry and it's piling and it's more laundry than you can keep up with, right? And I used to do that to my mom, by the way. When I'd I hang something up, I would right. put it it's in all the laundry basket. And she would say to me, I just washed this. Why did you put it back? And I'd yeah. be like, oh, sorry. And you go, yeah. <laughs> but Rachel, I'm so glad you asked the question because that is for mothers, for grandmothers, yeah. for anybody. Mm -hmm. It's, it's not just, uh-oh, the elections are coming, what's gonna happen? It's my daily life. Yeah, Can absolutely. Jesus sit with me while, while the house isn't perfect and social media and culture says, well, if you're not perfect, if, if the house is a mess, you're a mess. And I had to, I had to say, okay, I'm gonna look at this laundry pile and I'm just gonna bless Jesus for it. Well, yeah, I mean, did, and this is the, I mean, Bunny Wilson was a wonderful mentor in my life and she really taught me an important lesson in that time in my life when my kids were small and I had so much responsibility, didn't have a lot of, I didn't have any help at home and worked and trying to wash clothes and cook and all that stuff. And, um, and I just felt like, they don't appreciate me, you know? Yeah. And the Lord was like, uh, who are you doing this for? Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, well, for them, he's like, wrong answer. <laughs> you, you do it as unto me. Yes. And all of a sudden, when you begin Absolutely. to do things in light of, the kind of wife, the kind of mother, mm -hmm. the kind of daughter that you are to the King of Kings mm -hmm. and the Lord of Lords. It takes all of that expectation or thank you that you want from everyone. Mm -hmm. It takes it to another level and yes. you're, you have a peace. That's it. Mm -hmm. You know? So practically, I mean, that's just good advice. What you're saying is that you, um, you get to that place mm -hmm. where even those mundane day-to-day -day things, God's concerned about all of that. He can give you peace, right? With that. That's exactly right. Were you saying something? I was going to say, the Bible talks about, I want to talk about this, because yeah. the Bible talks about casting your care. And mm -hmm. we do that as Christians. We, we cast our burdens to the Lord. But how do we not, for people like me that like to be in control, a lot of times when there's a chaotic situation, no, no. I'm like, I have an idea. No. This is a great plan. We yeah. should do it like this. And I find myself, after I've casted it, taking it back. Mm -hmm. How do we not take yeah. back those burdens and really just trust the Lord with all the things that are going on in our lives. For me, when I began to practice this, and I had to, I had to, I had to, I wanted to master it actually, 
when I started getting a hang of it, like, okay, I remember distinctly, we're going to a ministry trip. I have one of my babies with me. She's so sick. We're up all night long. Mm -hmm. We pull over to a grocery store and we're gonna go start ministry right after this. And I said, God, I'm so exhausted. I don't think I can minister. And he said, okay, let's review. <laughs> Where am I? I'm, you're in me. Okay, how about you just relax and just rest? And I sat in that van about a 15 minute drive to the ministry event with this baby that was sick. And I just let everything go. You know, Psalms 4610, be still and know that I am God. He had me go look that up. Be still doesn't mean statue. <laughs> it means, in the root meaning, it means let go mm -hmm. to know God. Yeah. We have to let go oh, to know good. God. So to come back and answer your question, mm -hmm. I began getting these waves of energy as I, as I was resting in him. And I was like, oh, this is amazing. Oh my goodness, <laughs> this is a crazy revelation. And then I would do, 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 and go back to my old habits, and it would toss me, mm -hmm. and I'd go, okay, you know what? I like the other way better, so let me go back here. <laughs> so I think the reward and the refreshment and the inner energy of the Holy Spirit, like uh, just abiding in Him, I, I started tasting and seeing that the Lord was good yes. in those moments that I, 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 I hadn't had that experience before, mm -hmm. and that became like the, I wanna do more of that. I want to do yes. more of that. And I it like wasn't, that back. yeah, it wasn't um, your strength. Yeah. No. no. It's oh, yeah. like, you know, his strength is perfect mm -hmm. in our weakness. Mm -hmm. yes. And it's like rehearsing that. Some of my greatest ministry times are even, I mean, because I've been in television for so many years, or so at one of my weakest moments when I didn't mm -hmm. feel good, but I still mm -hmm. yeah. got up and went and allowed his strength mm -hmm. to be perfect in my weakness would turn out to be one of the greatest opportunities that he gave me a ministry. I would say every time. <laughs> every time. Every time. Yeah. When we get to the end of our rope or our energy or ourselves, that really is God's best work. Mm -hmm. I mean, he kicks it in gear. And I began noticing that. I began yeah. noticing like, wow, when I'm really done, that's his best beginning. Yes. Yeah. And it, it just displayed itself. Because it's not about us. Because it's not about us. There you go. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you know, when you introduced her as having five kids, I thought, wow, that's so many. And then I remember I have five kids too. <laughs> <laughs> There's a scripture in one translation that says, search for peace and work hard to maintain it. Yes. And, and I think about the scripture in Pro Proverbs that says a wise woman builds her house. You know, mm. peace doesn't always just fall in our lap. And yeah. I love what you're saying you because pursue. for everyday living, mm -hmm. we have to to search and then we have to create that environment of peace because if mom is peaceful, the house is going to be peaceful. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Amen. So Jenny, for people watching that they find themselves in the middle of chaos, but maybe they don't have a personal relationship mm -hmm. with the Lord. Maybe they know about it. Maybe they're going to church. How do they do that? And how important is that part of what we're talking about today? Oh, it is. It's everything. Because the person of peace, the person of rest, the person of trust, the one that's actually carrying our life in his hands. See, most of us have three fears. Almost every fear can be reduced down to three, and I talk about it in the book. It is the fear of being alone, the fear of not having help, or the fear of not being enough, underqualified. And those fears all say, man, it's up to me. And then that's when the anxiety comes. Right, right. So if I know that I'm not alone because I have Jesus, the person of Jesus, not a religion, mm -hmm. the man of Jesus, the Holy Spirit is here. He's also here to help me. So I am not on my own to do this laundry, to do this job, to do this business or whatever. I, I have the person of Jesus here to give me blueprints, to give me strategies, to give me help. And am I underqualified? Probably. <laughs> But he who's qualified in everything, and the word yeah. says that he gives everything, is going to pick up where I can't. Mm. So if we don't have Jesus, we only have this minimal amount of ourselves, and it's not enough. Right. How do and we so, receive him? How do people like, so, they're like, how do I do that? The, the Bible says that if we confess, we believe in our hearts, just believe that Jesus died on the cross. Mm -hmm. And I'll walk people through that right now. If that is you, simply right now, all you have to do is believe in your heart and confess with your mouth yes. that Jesus Christ, and you can pray with me to say, Jesus, Jesus, I believe that you were the Son of God. I believe that you were the Son of God. Son of God. And you died for every single one of my sins. And you died for every single one of my sins. And you defeated death, sin for me. 
and you, and you defeated, defeated death, death, sin, sin for, for me. And I am cleansed clean because of you. And I am cleansed and clean because, because of you. I invite you to be the Lord of my life. I invite you to be the Lord of my life. I'm going to let go of my life and I'm going to follow you. I'm going to let go of my life and I'm going to follow you. And I invite the Holy Spirit. I invite the Holy Spirit into my body, into my temple, into my body and into my temple to empower me. To empower me. Give me energy. Give me energy. Give me joy. Give me joy. Give me instruction. Give me instruction. And even give me correction. And even give me correction. And I will honor you and glorify you all of my days in Jesus name. Amen. And I will honor Glorify you all my days in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Wow, it's just that simple. That yes. And you know, um, he hears you, Mm -hmm. and he wants more than anything else to have a personal relationship with you. So, depression, anxiety. This is a huge issue. Oh, huge. So, tell us kind of your view on that and what God showed you about that. Yeah, I believe that as we live our life in the later. And I'm a futuristic person, and I think women in general are like, we have to do this, I have to do this, we have our list. So we're, I'm going through my tomorrow today, mm-hmm. and I'm going through in my head. Mm-hmm. And what I found was anxiety started rising up. And I wrote a whole chapter on this, on being present in the presence, and that's how we have our power, because mm-hmm. grace is supernatural power mm-hmm. to do what we can't do, yes. but it comes in the portion, in the moment you need it. Right. So if I have to get up tomorrow morning at 3 a.m. to catch a flight, I'm like, oh, I have to get up. I have to get to bed. Oh my, you know, I'm, I'm starting to like rile myself up. Yeah. He's like, listen, the 3 a.m. grace <laughs> yeah. shows up at 3 a.m. Yeah. Right. It doesn't show up at 6 p.m. the night yeah. before. Right. And you're telling your kids, get out of my way and do the, you know, all the things that we're like, oh, I'm such a nice, nicer person than this. So <laughs> the Lord told me to grab a hold of his presence and the portion of grace to do what I'm doing right now. This whole book right here, and the whole thing that we're talking about really boils down to trust. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting in a chair right now that I'm trusting mm-hmm. won't exactly. collapse. Me too. God yes. taught me. Yes. All of us are, right? Yeah. But God told me, he said, no, you know how to trust things. You're going to have to practice leaning all of your weight on me. Because mm-hmm. if I sat here, you know, like, okay, maybe this chair's going to fall any minute. I'm trying to have a conversation right. with you. I'm trying to do this, but I'm really holding myself up with one foot on the ground. Mm-hmm. That's how a lot of people live. Yeah, mm-hmm. so Because true. we're not putting our weight, what, yeah. your finances, your kids, just wait, put your weight into him. Yeah. yeah. And Jenny, it you comes down to choice. Yes, it does. You, you choose, choose to, to trust. trust. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, one of my favorite scriptures, trust in the Lord yes. with, with all heart. your heart. Yes. Lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Yeah. And he will yes. direct your path. Always. How many times have you thought, okay, I'm going to go that way, that way, and God is like, mm-mm, we're going to go this way. Yeah. A lot. Mm-hmm. And, and, yes. and that comes, yes. again, down to trust. I mean, there was a time... When I laid in my driveway and I was like, Lord, I don't understand this and that and that. And did you think about this? And that, which is kind of yeah. funny to yeah. ask God yeah. that <laughs> And the other, I remember he just said two words, trust me. Yes. yes. I was yes. like, okay, and that's let's it. do that. So the word rest he gave me in the car I was driving uh, to get takeout. And one of my teens did something that just aggravated me, right? You're just like, oh, and I wanted to control it and fix it. I'm driving. I said, okay, Lord, what would you like me to do? He said, well, we've been talking about this thing called rest. Release every single thing. R-E-S-T. And then he said, receive every single truth. And he was just saying, Jenny, this is about letting go. Mm -hmm. That's so good. In Jesus' name. Don't you you think in... Uh, when we are trying to control things, you talk about that there's something deep inside Mm -hmm. that we've got to figure out what that is, a fear that's coming from some fear. Always fear, actually. Mm -hmm. Fear, the acronym for that is false evidence appearing real. real. And God has not given us the spirit of fear. Fear, come on. Well, you know, um, I feel like there's somebody watching right now and this is all kind of new for you, you know, and you're just, but you've been listening. And that's um, the Holy Spirit and the Lord uh, just trying to speak to you and encourage you today, what would you say to them about, um, number one, trusting God Mm -hmm. and inviting the Lord into their heart and just um, believing that whatever situation they find themselves in right now, give God an opportunity to move and operate. Would you talk to that person right now? Yeah, so when you feel afraid or anxiety, the natural response, probably the normal response would be to run, like just get away and go maybe reach for a false fuel. Or freeze. Or freeze. There you go. 
Yeah, or the fight, flight, or freeze. And I would say try to catch yourself in that moment because, like you said, the storm is coming. So when that comes and you kind of feel like, "Uh uh-oh, I'm losing my peace, right then, don't run or freeze or fight. Just say, okay, Holy Spirit, I need you to speak to me. What is the lie I'm believing right now? Do I believe I'm alone? Do I believe I don't have help? Do I believe I'm not enough? Because if if you can, I kind of look at it like an interrogation room Mm -hmm. and I'm putting that flashlight right on the face of fear and saying, what are you trying to make me believe? Yeah. And I take my authority to say, I want you to tell me what, I, what, what that lie is. And then Jesus is next to me. And I go, so what's the truth? What's the truth? You tell me the truth. That's lying. What's the truth? And when you ask the Holy Spirit, what's the truth? Yeah. He will say, actually, I brought this person to help you. Or you know what? You're not alone because of this. Or it's okay that you're not qualified. I'm gonna bring help or I'm gonna do it. He'll, he'll tell you something like, trust me. He'll give you something revelatory in that moment that your spirit will go, ooh, okay. Mm-hmm. So I would, I would challenge you to w- not run, but work it out. Mm-hmm. Yes. Work it out with the Holy Spirit in that moment. And that, I still do that now. I still do that for all these So what is moments. one of the big, um, if you will, show ups for God in your life when he said, okay, Jenny, do this, trust me, and you were just amazed at what he did. Oh, goodness. Well, I had this reoccurring dream for a long time, and it was being behind the stage. I would drip and dance, so he uses that to talk to me in dreams. And everybody had choreography, and they were all marking their you know, dance, and they were going to the front behind the curtain doing their dance. And I said, oh, no, I don't have choreography. So I went up to this woman who had a clipboard, and she had her hair in a bun. She was really, really serious. And I said, excuse me, I don't have my choreography. And she looks at them, she goes, oh, you don't get any. And she walks off. She was, I think she's one of my angels. I don't know how that works, but I was like, <laughs> I, I have a feeling, you know. And when I woke up from that, a couple different times had the same dream. The Lord said, Jenny, I need you to know something is that you need to, um, it takes a lot of preparation to be spontaneous. So I'm going to throw you in things that you were not, you didn't plan for. Mm-hmm. But how do you prepare? He said, see yourself like a well. Mm-hmm. and fill up with me, fill up with my words, spend time with me, just fill up. And then he said, in a moment's notice, yes. I'm gonna drop my bucket down. So good. I'm gonna draw yeah. the living water out of you and I'll pick a portion of something yeah. that we've been talking about, maybe whatever. And he said, but just let it bubble up and come out. And he said, just don't ever let the bucket complain at the bottom because it's dry. <laughs> and he said, just spend time with me, be with me, be in my word, fill up, live with me. And then I'm going to place some demands on you that are going to be spontaneous. Mm-hmm. And so I would say when I started doing live broadcasts, I mean, you know, things like this, we didn't script this. We didn't sit down and no. talk about what we're going to talk about. We didn't. We didn't. And so um, all the other things I've done, especially this last year on different live broadcasts, I'm like, okay, Lord, are you going to be there when I come out to this little table and sit? And he's like, yeah, I'll be there and I'll speak through you. And I'm like, okay, great. That's oh, awesome. I'm totally yeah. 100% <laughs> in agreement. That's your yes. daily. That's, oh, no. I mean, that's how it started for me years, yeah. over 30 years yeah. ago. I was, you know, mortified to think about this. Oh, yeah. And finally, one day, the Lord said to me, Okay, because I had all of that churning anxiety and like, oh my God, you know. And he was like, I remember he said to me, he said, hey, just go go out there, be yourself, and I'll go with you. There you go. And I'll I'll give you the question, just like that question, that last question, and it evoked that dream that you just shared. Like, Mm -hmm. that was him. And I do want to bring this up because I feel like this is a lot of people. Um, I have a great father. He did leave when I was five. Okay, that plays into it does. the fear and anxiety that I had, right. mm-hmm. which was, oh, got to got to pull it together from here. And my I, and there, my mom and dad were wonderful people. My mother took care of me, but when I was thirty three, the Lord said, "Are you ready?" And I write about it in the book. Are you ready to deal with your father wounds? Mm. Are you ready for me to be your father? Because you're gonna have to peel your dad's face off mine. Mm. And I want to reveal myself as father to you. So I was uptight because I didn't know how to protect her and a provider in God. That's so good because um, mm. my husband is a psychologist and he said to me that earthly fathers have a profound impact mm-hmm. on oh, their yes. daughters. Oh, yes. And you can always tell when there's been a good father. Right. Or you can tell when there's been an absent father. Yeah. And so uh, for him personally, he got saved at 19, but he never knew his real father. Mm. And, um, and so... God became his father and has been since he was 19 years old. And, and I'm going to say that's what he wants to do for you, no that's matter right. how old you are. Right. What, if your earthly father disappointed you, I want you to understand that you have a heavenly father that wants to sit in the seat and be there for you. And what is the difference when you understand that your heavenly father 
is in that position as your father in a way that you never had before. Yeah, well, because I was raised by my mom, the Holy Spirit kind of, the mother heart of God, the nurturing side, I'm not saying right. Holy Spirit's a woman, I'm saying the nurturing part of God, the Holy Spirit, right. very comfortable with that. Jesus, kind of siblings, that friendship, that closeness, very comfortable. Father God was way out there. Out there. Sure. Yeah. And there came a moment where I said, I want to know Father God too, I just don't know how to get there. Yeah. And so he uh, began to tell me that I was going to have to um, sit with him in the mornings and quiet, and he was going to have to begin to speak over me. And he said, put a playlist on, and you just, you just, I'm going to speak over you like a father. I'm going to say words you've never heard mm. from um, a fatherly figure. And just know this, the devil would never say these words over you. And right. you probably wouldn't say these words over you. They're from me. So what were I, some of the words quickly that uh, he said over you? He just said, you're beautiful. I'd never heard that from, I mean, my husband, of course, but not from a father. I'm so proud of you. I'm so mm -hmm. proud of you. Yeah. Um, we're going to do this together. It's okay that you made mistakes. I'm, oh. I'm really good at turning those around. They were really basic fatherly things. Yeah. And so I just decided to be a good patient you know, like, he's like, there's a reason there's anesthet anesthetic, so people don't help you out. He's like, I don't need you to write things, and, and I just need you to kind of receive. It was receiving, Joni. Yeah. It was receiving. Yeah. And he took me through a month, 30 days, a prescription. And it was for me. It's not like a, you know, formula for everybody. But I just did that for 30 days, just rested in the presence for 30 minutes, and let him compliment me. And he's and still being a father to you. Mm hmm it changed everything. Oh, my goodness. It changed my life totally. Y'all love that. Yes. I, love I love it. it. Yes. April, you had such a great dad. Yes, so, I, I mean, it's even hard for you to yeah. relate. Oh, yeah. You know, you had such a... It is, like Rachel. Yeah. 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 yeah amazing. Best dad. Yeah. Real, all of us did, yeah. actually. Mm -hmm. I don't, and I don't know your story. My dad was, was very quiet. He was very gentle. He was very loving. But he, also, he was not available emotionally. Yeah. So I got a certain amount of that, but I didn't get all of it that I had to get from my Heavenly but Father. Had, and the, so, I mean, that's just a word for you watching right now. There's some of you can totally relate to what mm -hmm. Jenny talked about. And I want to tell you something. The good news is that you're not alone, and he wants to be a father to you. That's so powerful. Well, that's all the time we have. I want you to remember that no matter how chaotic life feels, that just like we're talking about the table today, God is for you, offering a peace, a peace, folks, that passes all understanding and supernatural rest in his presence. Just get still before him and get a Bible out to start in the book of John. In fact, if you prayed that prayer and received the Lord, I'll send you the book of John for free and just sit and just begin to read through chapter one and just close your eyes and get still and say, you know, speak to me, Lord. I want to hear your voice, and he'll show up. I promise you he will. Or if you're watching today and you feel overwhelmed by life, or maybe you're dealing with that anxiety or that fear or that depression, there's a toll-free number on the screen. We have wonderful prayer partners standing by ready to pray for you. And I do want to thank Jenny for joining us today. Be sure to pick up a copy of her book, Still, Seven Ways to Find Calm in the Chaos. You need to get that book. It'll be a blessing. Find out more about her ministry at Her Voice MVMT.com, yes. yes. right? Uh, which stands for movement. Um, as always, be sure to follow us on all social media platforms. You can leave us a comment. Let us know how Table Talk is touching your life. We love hearing from all of you. And you want to make sure you subscribe to the Joni Table Talk podcast. It's available right now across all the top podcast apps. Thank you so much for watching. So excited about the future for you and today what God is doing in your life and I just believe there's some of you God's going to just set you free from that spirit of fear and you're not going to have that you're going to have a trust in a way that you've never had before and that peace that you're feeling right now even as you watch this that's the Holy Spirit coming right into that room where you're watching so you receive that say okay God I'm open to what you have for me yes. and you're going to be amazed at what God has for you in the days ahead thank you ladies thank you Jenny We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today.